So what do you think of those New York Mets? They're the best. I love them. Did you watch the games? Every game, every night till 12 o'clock at night. No wonder you were sleepy all day at When work. you think about yeah, the way someone from another part of the country science. talks, one thing that strikes you are the words that they use. Do y'all have chicken fried steak? I would like chicken fried steak, hush puppies on the side, cream gravy, and an iced tea, please. What's that? This is hush puppies. This is a New York deli. If you want to nosh, if you want to eat, you could schlep all over the world. You wouldn't find what we got here. How about a poppy schmear? How about that knish? How about some kishka? How about that nice bialy? Now wait, yeah, wait, time out, y'all. I don't understand a word you're saying. Even though we all speak English, there are many words and expressions used in one place that might as well be Greek to people from somewhere else. We're talking about the Mets. I think she's talking about the vets. This drink consists of syrup, ice cream, milk, and it's all mixed up and turns out to be a very, very fine drink. And it's a milkshake, right? No, it's called a uh, cabinet. And this part of Rhode Island is called a cabinet. You know what, what is a gumbian? It's a gumbian. It's the thing that like you wrap things up in. Do you ever it hear stretches. A, do you ever hear another name for that? Rubber band? I think some people call it rubber band. Not here, though. I'm in Honolulu, and uh, it's quitting time. What, what do you say? Well, in, in, uh, you, would, you would use the Hawaiian term that everybody knows, which is pauhana, work is finished. And everybody knows that. What about jambalaya? Jambalaya? Oh, yeah, I know it's jambalaya. Yeah. What's that? Jambalaya, you mix that with uh, 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 meat, jambalaya, and rice, and you wear a season. You cook it, that's good jambalaya. Anna Goglin, you know what that means? Yeah. It's at a diagonal, skew, off from the perpendicular, we'll say. Anna Goglin meaning non-square, anything but square if it's sitting swanchwise. <laughs> Snickle Fritz, that's a good one. A Snickle Fritz, yeah. Snickle Fritz. Snickle Fritz. Little kid would be a Snickle Fritz. You know, a rowdy little kid would be a Snickle Fritz. What does schlep mean? What does schlep mean? Schlep means to carry, to lug, um, to schlep around, to walk around. Everybody in New York schleps. Everybody's carrying something. Everybody's schlepping someplace. We're all schleppers. Since you've been exposed to some New Yorkers, do you know what this word is? Shelp? No. Uh -uh. Schlep? Schlep. Schlep. Oh, schlep. S-E-H. Schlep. What does it mean? Well, did you sleep? That's what I think. Schlep. 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 Schlep last night in this room. <laughs> Words do tell a lot about the people in a particular place. In the Southwest, where the weather is always on everybody's mind, there are many expressions to describe rainstorms. Any kid from Oklahoma could tell you that. We learn the words we use in our regions the same way we learn our manners and customs from the people around us. Mama, mama, I'm so sick. Call the doctor, quick, quick, quick. Doctor, doctor, will I die? Count to five and you'll survive. One. Everybody two, learns to three, talk in the same four, way. Five, At first, five. they learn it in the home, from their family or the people who raise them. Look out, he's in that pocket. What, what you doing there, baby? He had to make the play. What you doing there, saying that? Huh? Playing in the street. She might want to play. Uh, uh, if you want to pick up some pecans, you pick them up over here. Don't pick them up out in the dirt, no. You put it in your mouth, the germs and all on it. Just pick them up over here and wipe them off of your clothes. You just, Once kids say, become old enough, they learn their language from their peers, the kids that they play with, kids the same age or those who are slightly older than them. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, we have to get out of here. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. As kids grow older, peer influence becomes even more important. Kids hear a lot of speech on TV. They listen to a lot of teachers talk in school. But what's really important to them is the speech of the kids that they interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. 
as kids go on, they may learn another dialect. But in those unguarded moments, moments of anger and passion, it's the original dialect that they fall back into because that's the dialect that has the most meaning for them. At times, I go back to my southern dialect, you know, at certain words, and I feel more comfortable. And then there are in other settings that I correct that. When, 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 when might you correct that? When I'm in my, my professional field, more so than anything, and when I'm in my, uh, my own social group and I'm more relaxed, my southern dialect seems to come out a little bit more, and I feel more relaxed, and then they begin to call me a southern girl, and that's my identity, and I like that. <laughs>